Well, man, it's almost over. The year of 2023. What a interesting year it's been. And I feel like there's so many things that could be said. But in just the few minutes that I have today, because I'm not going to be long-winded, says the person who could very easily be long-winded. Uh, let me just take a moment and think about something that we touched upon on Sunday, that light has broken into the world. That's what the Word of God says in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2, that they that sat in darkness saw a great light. Now that obviously is prophetically speaking of Christ. It was quoted again in Matthew chapter 4 when Jesus was healing so many people there in Capernaum and Galilee. But beyond that, I just want you to consider just for a moment this issue of clarity, being able to see things, seeing things with a sense of reality that can't be given to us by the world around us. And you say, well, why is that? And, and I would say that because the world is swept up in so many different issues and causes and events and perspectives, and you just go down the list, just in recent events, all the various perspectives regarding, you know, the events of the recent past. Uh, everyone's got an opinion. When we come to the next year and the election of another president, we're going to have a thousand different opinions with a thousand different perspectives, and some are going to be dramatic and drastic, and some are going to be you know, optimistic and encouraging, but it's it's going to be another one of those times where we have to weed through all of these things. So how do we navigate this? Well, the Bible speaks about the fact that, you know, immature people that base their assumptions on this world are like children that are tossed to and fro, it says in Ephesians 4.14, by every wind of doctrine, whatever teaching there is out there regarding any particular subject. There's the slight the craftiness of mankind that are just out there for the purpose of drawing people to their cause at whatever cost there may be. I remember recently hearing of an individual that's very well known, I won't give his name, that said that for people to have lied and regarding, for example, some of the events that went on in the previous administration in the Russia campaign, or even to hide the truths regarding that uh, laptop and to lie about that was acceptable to get to the point of making sure that the election went one way. Well, and by the way, I'm not saying that I am saying that the election was in any way invalidated. I'm just think it interesting that people can be so involved in a cause that it actually affects their judgment to the point that they could do wrong and call it right. I guess the end justifies the means from that viewpoint. Well, how do we navigate all this? Well, Thank God that we have, as the Word of God says in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1 through 3, speaking to all those people that were scattered abroad in various places throughout Turkey and Asia Minor, and that we have a living hope. It's a living hope. It's not just a hope that we don't really substantiate. I think there's a lot of hope out there today that can't be substantiated. Hope that Life is going to work out. Hope that I'm not going to get sick. Hope that, you know, the, these events in our economy are not going to affect me. Hope that we're, you know, we're going to plod through this. We're going to get through it. Hope that family's going to remain intact. Hope. But you can't substantiate any of that. It's kind of like a, how can I say it? It's a, a an empty hope. We just hope. But we have a living hope. 
It's living right now on the right hand of the Father in heaven. It's based upon the resurrection of our Savior. It's the one who ever lives to make intercession for us. And our hope is strategically placed there. It's a hope that becomes like a foundation or anchor for our soul, it speaks of in Hebrews 6, verse 18 and on. It's our hope. It's Jesus Christ. It's a promise that can't be altered. It's immutable. And we live based upon that hope. It's not seen. Thank God it's not seen. I, I don't base my hope on what others have achieved. I base my hope on what Christ has achieved. Thank God it's not somebody's formula for a particular cause. I don't base my hope on causes because I think we can all just look at history and realize, and even current history, how deceitful some of those causes have been. How many people have profited at the expense of others' people, others' effort. But my hope is anchored within the veil. My hope is placed in Christ. It's a living hope. It's substantiated by his very spirit within me. Now, as you come into this season and we end out this year, let's dedicate ourselves to a living hope. Obviously, it's not one that we can see as the Word of God speaks in Romans 8, verse 25 and 26, but it's real. It's substantiated by the very Spirit that lives within us. It's, exp it's substantiated by the confidence that we have to be able to boast of something that we've never seen but know to be true. It's substantiated by the fact that the blood of Jesus Christ has truly impacted our heart and our conscience in Hebrews 9.14. It's substantiated by the fact that God himself has opened our eyes and we can see things in a light and perspective that we've never been able to see prior to this time. But God has allowed us to see his victory over this world. No matter what, no matter how loud the devil roars, our eyes see the true victor. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. I look forward to the next year because it's going to be a year anticipating a living hope. One that is greater than anything this world's going to throw at us, folks. It doesn't matter. It's greater. Till next time, God bless you.